What's up YouTube? It's your boy Lopes and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing the model list on my Polkajet Civic SI. Let's get it. First off, I just want to say, I did wash the car, but then I came through this area that I thought would have been some cool cinematic shots. I didn't realize it was under construction, so that's why it's dirty. I literally just washed it, so that's a little heartbreaking. So we're going to start with the exterior of the car, and we're going to get our way into the interior and, what everyone's wondering, the power mods. So I'm going to keep most of the attention and focus on the car. I'll be speaking behind the camera just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to start with the front of the car. So we're going to start with the cosmetic mods that I did. This is my 2018 Honda Civic Si and it's quite heavily modified. Uh, we're going to start off with the front grill. So this is an aftermarket grill that I got from eBay and it held up pretty good for what it was for a little amount of time. Uh, but then eventually the grill started breaking on me. So these are the actual tabs that broke. I don't know if you guys can see it through the camera, um, but that's what happened. We have the Type R emblems in the front. I know a lot of you Type R guys do not like that, but it's too bad. I like the way it looks. Next, I did the 2020 vent upgrade. I believe these vents look 10 times better than the honeycomb. And uh, it's just my personal opinion. I think it's a nice subtle mod that makes the front end look a lot better. A lot of you guys ask me where I get my headlights. I am from Canada, so the headlights are OEM to me and they do come with it. Um, the front lip, this beefy, beefy front lip, as you guys see here, this is from Icon Motorsports. It's their GT style lip for the Civic Si. And then I basically deleted the grill, as you guys can see, and I cut it, painted it, and made it look all legit. So I got that professionally painted, and I think it looks so, so much better. The only downfall to this is because this lip is so beefy, it is starting to sag the lip just a bit. But aside from that, it's not that bad. The side markers are some generic brand side markers. Um, they're just clear side markers, but I think it flows with the car much better with the headlights, the wheel setup, and the fog lights. It's just super, super clean, and I like the way they look. For the side skirts, as you guys can see, it's insanely dirty, just because of the way where I drove and whatnot, but the side skirts are HFP OEM side skirts. I got an insane deal off these side skirts. Met up with someone about an hour away and uh, they were selling it off their car and I think it flows with the car so, so nice. I like the way they look a lot. The rear end of the car, a lot of questions have been asked about this rear end of the car. Let's start with the spoiler extension. This is a big, big question I get a lot. This is the car use or car use, I don't know how you say it, V2 spoiler. You can find it on their website. When I first bought it, I got their first batch and they got out of stock. So keep your eye on it. They may restock it and uh, I really like it. I think it really completes the rear end. The rear end of these cars always were the hardest thing to make look good in my opinion. And I think I successfully did it in a clean but aggressive way. I did the 2020 rear vents also. I think they look so, so much better. They have some depth to it and actually make the car look a little more aggressive. And accompanied with it is the sequential LED. If you guys have any questions about any of these mods, check out my playlist of my 2018 Civic Si. I literally have every single install on this car on that playlist, so you guys can check that out. The rear lip, it is something that I think makes the car look 10 times better. It looks complete because when you do the side skirts and the front skirts, the rear looks super high. The rear lip is from ABS Dynamics, and I think it looks a thousand times better with it on. Um, I know it's Type R-ish style, but for us, this is our one of the only lips you can get for the rear that actually look really good. So 
What do you guys think down below? Do you guys like it? So let's get to the wheel and tire setup. So these are NTO3 Plus M's. They are made by NK. They are 18 by nine and a half. They are on a 255, 35, 18 tire. And I just got some steel lug nuts to make it kind of complete it. I think it looks super, super clean. Um, brakes are completely OEM. That is an upgrade coming very soon. And uh, the suspension, which a lot of you guys ask as well, Da, 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 da. I am still on D2 springs after all these years and they've been holding up great. I've never been a big D2 advocate, but they've proven me with these springs that they are a good spring and they have lifetime warranty on the spring, which is really, really cool. I think the car is sitting super nice and super aggressive. There's not much more I would ask in the D2 suspension. It stiffens the ride just a bit, but nothing insanely, insanely bad. The car looks so, so much better, Lord. I think the fitment on this is perfect. I wouldn't ask for more, and I think I, this is the dialed in, like, you, look at that. You just see that tire poking out just a little bit. It is absolutely perfect. This fitment guide, I think, is the best fitment for 18s on a tension there's nothing that looks better in my opinion uh offsets can vary between probably 35 to 40 but 18 by nine and a half but you must run a 255 35 tire and these are the firestone indy 500s they are a really good tire and i think they're one of the best bang for buck tires that you can get so that is pretty much everything for the exterior of the car hopefully i didn't miss anything i don't think i did by looking at it um the car has been ceramic coated that's pretty much it um, but aside from that the exterior of the car is kind of simple but aggressive i try to stay in between that fine line of aggressive and clean uh, my past builds have been super aggressive now this one is that mix between aggressive and clean i think i've done a pretty good job with it i am super happy with how these uh, look and uh, i couldn't ask for more of how this tension looks i think it's a fantastic looking car especially when you put a little bit of work into it let's get to the interior nothing too crazy but i'll share with you guys the interior of the car is quite simple uh, the steering wheel is a type r steering wheel with carbon accessories on the side they are the full carbon that kind of just overlay i think it's like a nice little touch to the steering wheel and it looks really good the honda badge overlay uh, is on there also and i think it just ties in the colors together i have the hfp mats and i actually got them directly from honda and i think they look really really nice we also have a bunch of faux carbon along the car everywhere. I know it's not real carbon, but I think it adds a nice little touch and it's an inexpensive mod. Uh, a couple of my mod list videos you'll see there, like my top five mods. And then for the uh, the show piece of the car, I would say is the Acuity Short Shifter. It is still hands down one of my favorite mods. Uh, after all these years, as you guys can see, a cutie right over there, it basically transforms the way the car shifts and feels. It is something I highly, highly recommend. And if you're looking at getting any Acuity products, use the links in the description below. You don't get a discount, you don't pay any more, any less, but it helps out the channel a bit. This is not a biased decision because of that. I've been saying it before these links were even available if you go to my past videos. This shifter is just one of the best. Anyone that drives it loves it, and I haven't heard any complaints on it personally, but see for yourself hopefully one of you or your buddies have one and you can try driving it and you'll see exactly what i mean that is pretty much for the interior of the car it's nothing too special just a little bit of accessories with some faux carbon some color the steering wheel and the showpiece in my opinion is the cutie short shifter it looks good and it feels great um we're going to talk about the power mods and what you guys are all wondering like I said, this car has been in the build for about three years and I've kind of kept it to something that is dailyable, drives nice, has some power and looks great. So I've been trying to keep this car as a daily and not go too extreme with it. I think I've succeeded with that mark just keeping it right underneath that line. Uh, so let's talk about the power mods in this car. I think every Honda Civic should have came with these. Um, the only way you can run this if you're from Canada is if you do the windshield washer reservoir relocate. And that basically came with 
my Cobra intake. The Cobra intake is still one of my favorite mods and attached to it, I have the race math from PRL and then connected to that is the 271 turbo inlet. This thing was a great, great upgrade and the production of it is fantastic. The fitment had to be perfect for this to work. The size makes it so, so much better. And you really benefit off one of these once you have a 271 turbo upgrade. So I have the W1 271 turbo upgrade and that basically rounded off the car quite nicely and gave me that top end that the car really, really needed. Connected to that is a PRL Catless downpipe front pipe going all the way back into an NVIDIA R400 exhaust. This is how the NVIDIA R400 exhaust looks like. It has the titanium tips. I think it looks really, really good. Unfortunately, it gets hidden a little bit by the diffuser, but it's a great sounding exhaust and I think it is absolutely awesome. It's a 2.75 inch exhaust running all the way back and it's that perfect amount of aggressiveness and uh, quietness that you need from exhaust not to get bothered by the cops. We also have the PRL charge pipes with intercooler. Uh, I think the intercooler looks badass. If you guys can see over here, it's kind of trying to get that label right there for you so you can see. There you go. The intercooler is a really good upgrade. What I like about it is it keeps your temps down. And when I installed it personally, I felt a bit, it just felt a little more aggressive in the higher RPMs. It could just be my butt dyno, but that's what I personally felt. But honestly, the PRL intercooler with charge pipes was a great, great upgrade. And I really, really enjoyed it. Let's get into the engine bay here just quickly. I uh, have a powder coated. A lot, a lot, a lot of you guys asked. This is actually powder coated done by FIA Customs. And uh, this is just the cutie oil cap. It's a nice little combination. This color really pops within the bay and uh, makes it look so much better. It's not so dark and uh, messy. It gives a bit of color to the bay and I think it looks really, really good. Now, if we go a little further down, I have the Hasport 62A motor mount, which really helps the rock of the motor and making it feel a little better and not as rocky, especially with the torque behind these Civics. And then everything is tied together by the K Tuner V2. I am on a base map right now on this car. Um, it's the W1 Turbo with the race map. And honestly, it's been driving really, really good. I know a few other people who have the same intakes and the same turbos, and we've been running the base maps and none of us have been having issues at the moment. I still need to get it professionally tuned. I just don't really trust anyone within this GTA at the moment, especially if the car has been running really, really nice. Honestly, there's nothing too insane about this build. It's pretty much full bolt-ons with a turbo up great and all the cosmetic mods that you can do from the exterior and then a few interior mods slowly but surely i'm doing a few more um, i still need to get it tuned i just don't trust anyone within the gta yet uh, i gotta do a little more research into that but the car should be pushing around 280 to 300 horsepower it is a perfect amount of power for a daily car and honestly it looks great it drives great and i have zero issues anyone that drives a car really enjoys a car and i think i just balanced that perfect amount out into race car and daily car and that was my whole goal with this build is to have something with power handles great looks great and you can drive it every day i hope i didn't miss anything i have shifter acuity shifter bushings see look i actually missed something so i have acuity shifter bushings also that just clicked in right now but aside from that i think i've got absolutely everything the car is in really good condition and i really enjoy it and i just can't wait to see what I do next to it. I have a few plans. We'll see if it falls through. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, this is the mod list. I've had this car about for three years, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do it once, do it right. Peace out, and later.